Is the mic working? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Carson. Um, good morning and welcome. I'm Susan Richards, member of the Lay Led Committee, along with Val Hall, Kat Robinson Greeter, and Susan Berman. We meet regularly to plan Lay Led services, which are usually on the fourth Sunday of each month in order to give Rev. Linda a rest from the pulpit. Today we are filling in for Linda who has had recent and successful surgery. So our wishes go with her. Before I go any further in my welcome, a few housekeeping notes. We're still in yellow as you've noticed. Um, so we're following yellow zone protocol here. Um, that includes all congregants staying masked while in the sanctuary. You can walk through Hendricks Hall downstairs if you need to, it's really nicely air conditioned. Um, just be masked when you're going to the uh, second bathroom closest to the activities room. We do have hearing assisted devices in the back that work really well. And Zoomers, hello. If you're on Zoom today, uh, we're assuming you're hosting yourself. It's good to see you um, as we feel like you're able to take care of one another. Um, there's a contact uh, tact tracing card in your hymnal on the off chance, hopefully this won't happen, that one of us tests positive for COVID, you will all be notified. When I volunteered to lead this service, I knew what I wanted to focus on. A certain part of the weekly service, joys and concerns, has always felt to me like a crucial part of our time together. What concerns my friends concerns me, and I always love hearing about the joys and celebrations of the people who matter to me and who are a part of this community. I guess it's like John Donne, the John Donne poem about no man being an island, every man is a piece of the continent. Our joys and sorrows connect us, and sharing them together makes us stronger together. I thank Carl Borchert and Bob Middleton in advance for agreeing to share your thoughts on this subject with us. Before I go any further, are there any announcements? And if there are, if you can come forward into this, what I hope is a working mic um, to make an announcement, that would be wonderful. Thank you, Nancy, come on. Good morning. I'm Nancy Adrian. Um, I currently chair the Committee on Ministry for our blessed um, Reverend Linda. And she wanted me to update you all on her successful surgery. I think I'm going to take this off. She um, came through her surgery successfully. She um, will be returning tomorrow. Uh, she's with Gary and doing some walking in the gardens uh, around MGH. Um, and I think some of you know that you know her, her um, nodules are a, a, a multifocal kind of um, mass, and they're not the kind that metastasize. So she um, had a different kind of surgery. It was a cryosurgery, which is, you know, you go in uh, into the chest wall and do a, a freezing of the nodule, and there it goes. So, um, less recovery, uh, two and a half weeks of recovery versus, I think, the six months that she went through last time. So, she's doing really well, and um, she'll be doing some walking when she gets back. I'll have to be monitoring her activities because I know she wants to get on her bicycle and get in the water to swim. So, <laughs> she'll be uh, doing, doing some some um, exercises. And um, uh, there's a card in the back, a uh, Committee on Ministry card that was printed up. Um, our names and contact information are on this. It's Loretta and Sue Robinson, which I, I believe she's at uh, Tucker Nut today, and Ann Perkins. We're the committee. And we will be um, meeting at least quarterly uh, starting in September for our committee duties. So um, I think that's it on this announcement. Thank you. Thank 
you. Any other announcements? Sounds like my mic is off, but. Okay, okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, I am not sure where to put this announcement. It's a, definitely a joy, a concern, a grief, a, a loss. Um, but if, for those of you who haven't heard, we lost um, our Jerry Mack um, this past, I think, August 3rd. So recently, um, he's passed away with Nancy at his side. Um, I'm sure there will be more news about that, but I wanted to be sure folks are aware of that sad news. I believe he was 94. Um, so, um, and he was in New Hampshire at the time. Okay, any other, and I'm blanking on Zoom there. I don't know if they have any, any announcements, but no? Okay, good. Um, let's light our chalice, Peter. Come forward. The, the words um, to the chalice lighting are in your order of service. Hopefully we'll have success lighting it. I know we've had varied success. <laughs> Okay, together as Peter lights this, with this flame, we renew our commitment to justice, peace, and compassion. Yes, okay. Got a high pitch. Okay, if everybody would like to stand for our affirmation. Thank you. It's the time in our service to greet one another, but before we do, we ask if you are new today or returning after a long hiatus, if you would like to tell us or remind us of your name and where you're from, we would love to greet you in good UU Meeting House style. Um, any new Zoomers over there? I don't know if they can hear us today or not, but yes, they can, and I don't know if we can hear them, but hi, Zoomers. And <laughs> anybody else? I know, um, yes. If you want to come up to the mic, that would be great. Thank you. If you don't have mic fear, <laughs> I'm good. Hello, uh, my name's Emily Rose Bishop. I moved here two weeks ago from Chicago. I'm originally from a little town in Wisconsin called the Cape Cod of the Midwest. It's called Door County, Wisconsin. Uh, so yes, it's my first time here. I am a chef and a jazz vocalist, so no mic fear at all. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Anybody else? I know De Debbie's co cousin is here. If you don't want to go up to the mic, I can. Yeah, yeah, I've heard her name. Thank you. I think of, as I told you, Debbie often, so thank you for coming and remembering her. Debbie Merritt, folks on Zoom, if you didn't hear that, was an active, active member of the congregation for years and years. So, okay, if everybody wants to stand up and say hello to everybody, wave out and, and <laughs> chat if you want to. Hello there, everybody. Hey, Allison. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Allison. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, everybody. Hi, Hi Natalie. Hi, Natalie. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Hey, Natalie. Good morning. Hi. 
Hi, Randy, oh, Randy. Yeah, <laughs> hello, hello, Sandy. So everybody. I am not hearing, I'm having trouble hearing. No. Oh. Sound is fine. Hello, Lucille. Hi, everybody. Hello. Um, What's that bell before? Good morning, good morning. See Natalie's music stand. You leading it tonight, Julie? Hello. Yes. I couldn't play the cello. Yes, I can we play have him one twelve. Do you this big? And please stand if you are able. If you're too hot to stand, that's okay too. happen where the sound go uh oh sound. Call you back, okay? I'm service. Okay. 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 The poem and meditation that I've chosen is a combination by a Khalil Gibran. Uh, it's called On Joy and Sorrow, which I thought was appropriate for today's service. Then a woman said, Speak to us of joy and sorrow. And he answered, your joy is your sorrow unmasked. And the self-same well from which your laughter rises was oftentimes filled with your tears. And how else can it be? The deeper that sorrow carves into your being, the more joy you can contain. Is not the cup that holds your wine the very cup that was burned in the potter's mm -hmm. oven? And is not the lute that soothes your spirit the very wood that was hollowed with knives? When you are joyous, look deep into your heart, and you shall find it is only that which has given you sorrow that is giving you joy. When you are sorrowful, look again in your heart, and you shall see that in truth you are weeping for that which has been your delight. Some of you say, joy is greater than sorrow, and others say, nay, sorrow is the greater. But I say unto you, they are inseparable. Together they come, and when one sits alone with you at your board, remember that the other is asleep upon your bed. Verily, you are suspended like scales between your sorrow and your joy. Only when you are empty are you at a standstill and balanced. 
When the treasure keeper lifts you to weigh his gold and his silver, needs must your joy or your sorrow rise or fall. Thus says Khalil Gibran. Our second hymn is hymn 108, My Life Flows On. forgetting how hot I am with those beautiful music. Um, typically, this is the time when we share our joys and concerns. Since our third service theme is joys and concerns this morning, I'm going to save this till after our reflection, until after Carl, Bob, and I speak. And I hope that some of you may feel inspired at that point to share a joy or concern then. So without further ado, I'm going to call up Carl for being our first speaker. Good morning. Everybody hear me? Kind of had a loud voice anyhow. Um, I wrote down a few things last week and then I edited, edited them and worked on them yesterday. Um, so here it goes. Um, joys and concerns in today's world. There is no doubt that today's world is extraordinary. The ongoing concerns over the COVID-19 pandemic, the state of our economy, the war in the Ukraine, the climate crisis, and many other stressors are affecting all of us. Susan asked me if I would participate in this service and share a few insights regarding joys and concerns and the state of the world. I take joy in the little things in life as well as some bigger ones. I wake up in the morning 
and I hear several birds duking it out over something, perhaps territory, or raising their young and getting them ready to fledge. I look out my picture window and see fog enveloping the horizon and rolling in from the ocean. It is so quiet and peaceful. White-tailed deer stroll by, and American crows carry on with a racket and up to something. The other day I saw a six-point buck holding court with several does down by the swamp. So stunning. Cottontail rabbits by the dozens come out at night and feed on grass around the house in the outside lights, not knowing that I'm watching their patient routine. My friend Cameron, the owner of Spinnaker Records in Hyannis, sent me a CD, Frampton Comes Alive, from 1976, which I listened to when I was 12. It sounds as good now as it did then, and even better. I figured out how to make a spinach omelet by trial and error in the kitchen, where I spend more time now that I'm retired. How blessed am I that I can retire at 57 years of age? I worked for 49 years. How blessed am I that I live on an estate property where I grew up, where the area is quiet at night and so full of nature, weather, and beauty. Joining the UU Church has been a tremendous joy for me. I have learned so much getting involved with the management of the church and met so many people, both permanent residents and summer residents. I have made some wonderful friends along the way. I feel supported and less shy asking for help when I need a helping hand. Getting along in groups of people can be challenging. I have learned some important lessons about human interaction and group dynamics, which I studied at UMass years ago. My mother used to say, anytime you have more than one person in a room, there's going to be conflict. And yes, Karen, that is so true. I am thankful that my conflict resolutions, resolution skills are improving and I always need to work on patience. There are many serious concerns that I have with our world. Greed for money, power, territory, profit, control, and influence are at the top of the list. The big three as I see them are nuclear war, climate change, and overpopulation. When I was a teen, I worked on Nantucket for a Nuclear Free World. I joined Amnesty International. I was a young activist following my parents' example. Ronald Reagan was president. Trust, but verify. The MX missile was the peacekeeper. He presided over the biggest arms buildup in American history. I heard Dr. Helen Caldicott speak of the Wade Cottages in Sconset. I had begun a lifelong commitment to activism. I wasn't going to sit on my hands. In the early 2000s, I embarked on what would become my passion, offshore wind energy. I researched, I traveled to Europe for an up-close and personal look, and I've met hundreds of people along the way. I have always spoken the truth about the turbines and the wind farms. I have penned dozens of letters and editorials. I've been on TV half a dozen times. I am very proud of 22 years of hard work and advocacy. Nantucket is on the front lines of the negative effects of climate change, more powerful storms, sea level rise, and coastal flooding and erosion. Since the dawn of the industrial age, humankind has pumped trillions of tons of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. We only have a few years left to turn things around before we hit the fail-safe point. The Vineyard Wind One Energy Project is currently now under construction off our southwest coast. There is hope. There is hope for our beautiful blue home. I am aware of one million plus environmental groups worldwide who are working hard every day for positive change. I have not lost my faith in humanity. I hope that I never do. I need to get up in the morning and put my feet on the floor and thank the Holy Spirit for another day on earth. Some days are better than others. I use prayer and Vipassana meditation to help ground me. I try to get enough sleep. I moderate alcohol and caffeine. I watch sweets and try to eat right. 
Sometimes I get outraged at the state of our world and certain politicians and corporate players like the fossil fuel industry. Greed, greed, and more greed. I have some of my retirement investments in socially responsible funds. No alcohol, gambling, weapons, and tobacco. In conclusion, gratitude is the open door to abundance. In the end, only kindness matters. To be able to forgive another human being is absolutely critical. My parents taught me right from wrong. Write thank you notes. Stand up when an adult enters the room. Do unto others as you would have done unto you. Give back to the community. Have a positive attitude, a sense of humor, and a hard work ethic. Check on your neighbors and lend a helping hand when you can. I have experienced tremendous loss, pain, and grief in my life. I am an empath, and I am deeply compassionate and aware of other people's suffering and pain. This is a tough life to live. It takes a village. We are all on this journey together. We need to be kind to one another and forgive each other. We need to change our habits to have less of an impact on Mother Earth. Mother Nature is very angry with us right now. She bats last. If we come together and work to solve problems, there is no limit to what we can do. Each day is a gift. That is all we can live, one day at a time. It is in our nature to care and help each other. I truly believe that, and I truly believe that we can survive and fix the major problems in our world together as a team. Thank you all for listening. And let's begin the work. Thanks, Carl, and I'm going to call up Bob now. Boy, it uh, feels good to take that mask off, doesn't it? Um, well, when Susan asked me to say a few words about joys and concerns, I said yes right away, because I knew exactly what I was going to do. I'd make a list of great societal issues, and I would contrast them with joys that are more personal and more focused. Then I would make the insightful point that these concerns and joys exist Simultaneously, they are inseparable. I would list big concerns like, kind of like what Carl did, climate change, Ukraine war, women's rights, gun violence, racism, poverty, LBGTQ plus rights, the fight for democracy, the housing crisis, COVID, monkeypox, I mean, the list goes on. So many concerns that's overwhelming to focus on one. Therefore, these things can remain unsaid during our joys and concerns at church. There are so many concerns that are very significant but remain unsaid. I would then point out that it is actually a very joyful time personally for myself and Loretta. Many of you know that our two daughters have recently gotten married Chrissy, with two weeks' notice, surprise, and Liz, following a one-year engagement. Our youngest daughter, Chrissy, is moving to the Netherlands at the end of this month with her Dutch husband. He got his dream job as a university professor, and she found a great job, too. She's starting a new chapter in her life. I'm so excited for them. My heart overflows with love for her. Our oldest daughter, Liz, was married last month. It was a grand party with family and friends. They are settled in the big old house that they bought with two dogs and two cats. They are very much in love. My heart is indeed full of joy. It then occurred to me that this a focus on global issues was also a way to avoid mentioning personal concerns. And it could also inadvertently 
somewhat trivialize the very personal concerns that people express during joys and concerns. That was not my intent. I am probably not alone in keeping joys and concerns to myself unless a significant event occurs. But I do have concerns that remain unsaid, like a disabled relative with financial issues, an adult son lacking direction, the fear of losing my daughter to another country, aging gracefully, and more. My suggestion is to be even more sensitive to the unspoken joys and concerns, the kind that break your heart, unspoken joys and concerns that come from a very deep place. We don't know what we don't know. We can all use a little more love, empathy, and random acts of kindness in our lives. I come to church to find peace and spirituality, to get into a sacred space, to be reminded of the love in the world, to find a path to becoming a better person. In that spirit, I'd like to share a prayer with you. O oh, cosmic birther of all radiance and vibration, soften the ground of our being and carve out a space within us where your presence can abide. Fill us with your creativity so that we may be empowered to bear the fruit of your mission. Let each of our actions bear fruit in accordance with our desire. Endow us with the wisdom to produce and share what each being needs to grow and flourish. Untie the tangled threads of destiny that bind us as we release others from the entanglement of past mistakes. Do not let us be seduced by that which would divert us from our true purpose, but illuminate the opportunities of the present moment. For you are the ground and fruitful vision, the birth, power, and fulfillment as all is gathered and made whole once again. Amen. This is a translation of the Lord's Prayer from Aramaic directly into English, avoiding the Greek and Latin translations that typically are intervening. Uh, perhaps this uh, can give you pause and a little joy too. Thanks for listening. Thank you, Carl and Bob. That was fantastic. You guys went above and beyond. I really appreciate it. I admit when I looked at this, I followed my first inclination when I decided on the theme for this service and Googled top things that make people happy and what makes them sad. Strangely, most of the sad lists were much longer than the happy lists. Not quite sure why. The sad list that I focused on actually had 50 items in it. I did identify with some, but not all of them. The top 10 out of the 50 on the sad list, one, worry. Two, holding on to your perceived idea of control. Three, holding grudges. Four, believing everyone should play by your rules. Five, comparing yourself to others. Six, choosing to be happy only when your dreams come true. Seven, being a glass half empty person. Eight, being lonely. Nine, materialism over other things in life. And 10, not making time for the right things. In the top 10, Items on the happy list, I think they'll prob probably be recognizable to you. One, family and relationships. Two, meaningful work. Three, positive thinking. Four, gratitude. Five, forgiveness. Six, giving to others. Seven, religion. Eight, personal freedom. Nine, good health. And 10, strangely enough, was watching a bit of TV. I guess people come forward and talk about what they've, what they've been binging for their joys. When I come forward to share a concern during joys and concerns, how much is derived from the sad list and how much from the happy list? I think I do lean toward sharing from the happy list, 
with a couple of concerns from the sad list thrown in, mostly from number one on the list, worry. Worry is definitely a biggie for me. Politics, animal welfare, climate, violence, all the things I worry about a lot. I love the Mark Twain quote that I found while researching this. I am an old man, he says, and have known a great many troubles, but most of them never happened. Reminds me that worrying is often pointless, but a hard habit to stop. I can say that it helps to share those worries with a friend and from time to time with this UU congregation. Number one on the happy list is family and relationships. And I have to say that it's what I think about and share the most about. My biggest joys come from this category and I would venture to say that, that the same is true for many of you. I would also have to say that sometimes my biggest worries come from this same area as well but typically the balance leans towards the positive side of families and relationships. Next on the sad list, holding on to the perceived idea of control. Learning to let go of things which we can't control, which means letting go of a lot. The happy list goes on to meaningful work, and I'm not just talking about a nine to five job. I'm talking about anything that we work on that brings us joy and meaning gardening, making music, volunteering, reading, following the joys of my family, much of my happiness comes from my meaningful work. When I continue down the rest of the sad list, I realize that I don't want to spend time focusing on, on that when I think about the joys of my life. Sure, I may struggle a bit with those few items, seeing the glasses half empty, not making time for the right things from time to time, but I think in general, I choose to highlight the items on the happy list and share them here where I step forward during joys and concerns. Beyond family and relationships, I think a lot about gratitude, forgiveness, thinking about and giving to others, and good health. All these things become more meaningful to me when I share how I feel about them here with joys and concerns. And so today, I will choose to share a joy and a concern with these two lists in mind. My recent joy would have to be my niece's wedding, another wedding, Bob, at the end of July. After losing her mother to cancer and getting a bad enough COVID case to be hospitalized for several days, my niece Emma Jane deserved a joyful occasion and worked hard for it. And this one was joyful indeed. Such a wonderful weekend. And as often happens in life, that joyous occasion ended up being balanced out by a concern, namely that Peter and I both ended up testing positive for COVID. We both suffered a bit beyond mild symptoms, but we ended up being okay and we're grateful for the antivirals that helped get us through it and get back to health. So that's my big joy and concern right now. Um, now, remember I said we skipped over the joys and concerns for, from the congregation. I'm wondering if there's anybody here who would like to share a joy or concern with us today. Again, we're connecting this part of our theology as our seventh principle. It's the interconnected web of all existence of which you, we are all a part knowing that our joys and sorrows connect us all. If you have our joy or sorrow to share, please come forward or unmute yourself. If this is your time. Do we have a joy? Okay. Okay. Always an interesting experience to combine with our hybrid service. So I'm, I'm always thankful to have the Zoomers here for sure. For all the joys that have been expressed, we ask that they grow more joyful because shared here in this circle of friends and for the sorrows shared and unshared, we ask that they grow easier to carry because brought here to this loving community. Thank you. <clears throat> now we go on to the time for the offering. As always, we ask you to be generous to keep this interdependent and interconnected web alive, to keep our beloved community supported takes all of us sharing our time, our energy, along with sharing our joys and concerns. It also takes resources. This is your time to contribute, to keep all that the UU Meeting House is and means to keep us thriving. 
You have cards in your hymnal if you choose to use those, the ones that for, are for contact tracing, and to put your offering in, or um, if this is a pledge payment rather than an offering, please just write pledge on your envelope. You can also scan the QR code on your contact tracing card. You can go onto our website. If you need more help, let us know, and thank you for your generosity. Let People saw the, the insert on that that tells a little bit of the story behind the lyrics. And I think we're up for our last hymn as soon as we get <laughs> our rushing organist up there. Um, hymn number 175, We Celebrate the Web of Life. Please stand as you are willing and able and face the organ.
Thank you, Carson. Please be seated. I've chosen for my closing words, finally getting back to Mary Oliver, of two short readings from her. The first one is called, We Shake with Joy. We shake with joy, we shake with grief. What a time they have these two, housed as they are in the same body. And the second one is, don't hesitate. My favorite line is the last one. If you suddenly and unexpectedly feel joy, don't hesitate. Give in to it. There are plenty of lives and whole towns destroyed or about to be. We are not wise and not very often kind. And much can never be redeemed. Still, life has some possibility left. Perhaps this is its way of fighting back, that sometimes something happens better than all the riches or power in the world. It could be anything, but very likely you notice it in the instant when love begins. Anyway, that's often the case. Anyway, whatever it is, don't be afraid of its plenty. Joy is not made to be a crumb. And I think we'll extinguish the chalice if I can have my charming husband up here. We can join together in saying the world words as he's blowing it, blowing it out. Together.
um, I think we have a gathering point in the back and the Remembrance Garden. So if people would like to join us but to the side of the and behind the church, that would be wonderful. If we can handle the heat. Thank you, everybody, for coming. <laughs>